ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد I welcome all of you. We continue reading from Al Mulakhas Al Fiqhi of our noble Sheikh Al Alam Al Doctor Saleh bin Fawzan Al Fawzan. Hafidahu Allah Ta'ala wa Matta'ahu bis Saha wa Al Afiya. Wa Rafa Allahu wa Liwalidei wa Lil Muslimina wa Al Muslimat Ameen. Babun fi Ishra Tin Nisa. Kala Yuradu bil Ishra Lugatan Al Ijtima wa Al Muhala Tafa Yukalu Likuli Jama'a. عشر ومعشر والمراد بها هنا ما يكون بين الزوجين من الألفة والاندمام لأنه يلزم كل من الزوجين معاشرة الآخر بالمعروف فلا يماطله بحقه ولا يتكره لبذله ولا يتبعه أذن, أذن ومنه لقوله تعالى في سورة النساء وعاشرهن بالمعروف وقال تعالى في سورة البقرة ولهن مثل الذي عليهن بالمعروف وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم خيركم خيركم لأهله وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم لو كنت آمرا أحدا أن يسجد لأحد لأمرت المرأة أن تسجد لزوجها لعظم حقه عليها وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا بات باتت المرأة إذا باتت المرأة هاجرة فراش زوجها لعنتها الملائكة حتى تصبح In this chapter here في عشرة النساء Here النساء usually means women But what is intended here is the wives How a man deals with his wives The Sheikh says in this chapter here That we're going to learn the husband and wife relationship especially the rights that the husband have, actually the, 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 how uh, the husband should treat his wife. So the, the wife and husband, or the husband and wife relationship, refers to the relationship between the married man and woman. Here they said the married partners. So as you see, this translation, partners could be anything. Right? Huh? No? I mean, it could be it could be anything, right? When he said married partners, could be two men, a'udhu billah, and two women, a'udhu billah, which is haram in Islam. It's haram. So these translations here, that's why we don't rely on them much. You know, this is the relationship between the husband and his wife which should be, and that's the reason why I'm reading this, so I, we can correct what we can correct and see. Aina. Huh? Between a man, the husband, and a woman, the wife. Ahsan, yeah, because then they says that, A'udhu Billah. Between the man, who is the husband, and the woman, which is the wife. Ahsan, that's a good remark too. Because they say the same thing. Two men, one of them is the husband, the other is the wife. A'udhu billah, nasallallah, salam wa alafiyah. That was a good one, Hassan. We should be based on kindness. Aynam. Each of the two spouses must live kindly and faithfully with the other. None of them should withhold the other's rights or have an aversion to fulfilling any of them. Sheikh, Sheikh, Sheikh Raslan, Hamid bin Sa'id Raslan, Hafidahullah, he says, because when you fulfill these rights, when the wife fulfilling the rights of her husband, she's doing it for Allah, out of obedience to Allah. She shouldn't feel any way. Likewise, when the man fulfill his wife's right, then... 
he shouldn't have anything in his arm I'm doing you a favor or, or I'm doing this for you no you're doing it because you're ordered to by Allah and the Sheikh he said this is something that a lot of people don't pay attention to I listened to a very nice talk by Sheikh uh, Raslan this morning yeah, if you go I don't know if it's on his website but I just find it on YouTube Ishrat and Nisa, two parts. If those who know Arabic, it be very, very beneficial. You can go on YouTube and type Ishrat and Nisa, Sheikh Raslan. And subhanAllah, it's amazing. He said, a lot of people, they, subhanAllah, you, you find the men and the women, the, the husband and wife, the way they treat each other on based on their terms. And they forget that this is an act of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you fulfill the rights, you're doing it so you can get close to Allah, not just to make the other one happy with you. You see? No, you're doing it so that you can be obedient to Allah. And that's just some, some people, they don't pay attention to this, and they deprive themselves of a great deal of good. Yes, subhanAllah. The same way when you go to work, you sign a contract, and you do your job. Muslim do his job. He don't do the job only if the manager is around. If the manager is not around, he's going to play games, he's going to go be on WhatsApp, on Twitter. No, you sign a contract to work, you work to the best of your ability, because now you get rewarded. You get paid, but you get rewarded for a good doing a good job, for being honest. Now. So he said, so when they fulfill one's rights, they should feel no way, no aversions whatsoever, or give the other his or her rights, but follow it with injury, you know, or reminders of favor and generosity. Oh, I did this for you, and I did that, and I did this, and I did that. No, you did it because that's an act of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the husbands, the men, to be kind to their wives. Those women, they are married. He said, I live with them in kindness. Surah Al-Nisa, verse 19. Also in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 228. And do to them and in the wife is similar to what is expected of them according to what is reasonable. According to what is reasonable. And he mentioned the Sheikh, a couple of narrations. The first one, the hadith in which the Prophet said, the best amongst you is the one who treats his family the best way. The best of you men are those who are best to their wives. SubhanAllah. And also another narration, the Prophet said, if I were to command anyone to prostrate to another, I would command a woman to prostrate herself before her husband due to the greatness of his right over her. Also in the hadith, another hadith that is agreed upon, Prophet ﷺ says, If a woman spends the night deserting her husband's bed, the angels keep sending their curses on her until morning. So this is very serious. When you do things, you, you learn to do what's pleasing to Allah. You don't just do what you think is right. If he's nice to her, now she's going to be nice to him. But if he show her a hard time, now she's going to, you want to play that game? I, I, I've been there. No, you don't do that. You want to continue to do what's pleasing to Allah and be patient. Even if you're going through some hardship, be patient. Likewise, the men too. We are commanded as men, those who, amongst us who are married, to treat our wives with kindness, to be gentle, and our Example is the Prophet Sallallahu and how he dealt with his wives. He was kind and merciful and gentle and generous, forbearing. Aina. And all of this because if the if the husband and wife, the man and woman, they are happy, Alhamdulillah they be productive. They can produce a lot of good to each others to their family, to the society. But if they are unhappy and going through a lot, then they're going to be a burden on the community, not alone be able to produce any good because they don't have it. They're going through turmoil and problems and fighting each other. Huh? 
then they're not going to be able to benefit themselves, nor to benefit their children, nor benefit the society. The one who doesn't have something cannot pass it on. It's just as simple. قال ويسن لكل من الزوجين تحسين الخلق ويسن قال الشيخ ويسن لكل من الزوجين تحسين الخلق لصاحبه والرفق به وتحمل أذاه لقوله تعالى وبالوالدين إحسانا إلى قوله والصاحب بالجنب قيل هو كل واحد من الزوجين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم استوصوا بالنساء خيرا فإنهن عوان عندكم حسنه الألبان في الإرواء وفي سنن ابن ماجا أيضا Another point the Sheikh mentioned is that he says it is from the sunnah that each of the, the spouses, the husband and the wife the man and the woman and I'm not going to go and say the man and the woman so we're Muslims we know what it is, okay? Alhamdulillah, you got the point. I'm not going to like man and a woman, wife and this. When we say spouses, that's what we, as Muslims, that's the only way. Is the husband who is a man, uh, a Muslim man, okay? And the wife, which is a Muslim woman that is uh, lawful for him. Okay? No. Okay. So the Sheikh says it is from the Sunnah that each of the two spouses should treat the other clemently, nicely, show good manners towards the other, and be tolerant concerning the harm caused by the other. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Because he mentioned the ayah, and, and, and to parents do good, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the same ayah, and likewise, you be good to the companion at your side. Yet it is viewed that the word companion is the aforementioned, in the aforementioned verse refers to each of the two spouses. Amen. Similarly, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said." Uh, Treat women kindly, especially the wives now here, the wives, what is intended the wives, as they are like captives in your houses. Because they live in the house, they move with the man, because this is the proper way, and the man supports her, and she take care of the matters of the household and the like. قال وينبغي للزوج إمساك زوجته حتى مع كراهته لها لقوله تعالى وعاشروهن بالمعروف فإن كرهتموهن فعسى أن تكرهوا شيئا ويجعل الله فيه خيرا كثيرا سورة النساء قال ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما في معنى الآية الكريمة ربما رزق منها ولدا فجعل الله فيه خيرا كثيرا وفي الحديث الصحيح لا يفرق مؤمن مؤمنة إن سخط منها خلقا رضي منها آخر أخرجه مسلم من حيث أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه The Sheikh mentioned that it is incumbent upon the husband to keep the bond of marriage even if he dislikes his wife it's not like whenever the man don't like the woman or she gave him a little bit of hard time, all of a sudden you get out of here, divorce, 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 60 times. Which had? Pack your stuff and leave. I'm going to get a coffee. You better not be back when I be back. Which had? Man, they take everything like game. This is the deen of Allah. Whatever you want to do, you want to do it because you're going to stand in front of Allah on Yom Al-Qiyamah alone. People playing games and they harming themselves. Hey, look, this is the guidelines of Al Islam. The beauty of this deen of Al Islam. Even if a man, the husband, the, if he dislike his wife, then he still try to keep the marriage. Because there is no perfect woman. 
This man who's going to like divorce a wife for the first mistake, he thinks that he's going to find the perfect woman that have no mistakes. He himself is not perfect. He himself is full of mistakes and shortcomings and problems and issues. All of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Uh, and and live with them in kindness. For if you dislike them, perhaps you dislike a thing, and Allah makes therein much good. And Allah makes therein much good. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, as al Imam Ibn Jarir al Tabari, and also Ibn Abi Hatim, they mention in their tafsir of this ayah. That Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, this is one of the great companions from the scholars, and especially in the interpretation of the Quran, since the Prophet ﷺ make dua, make dua for Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. I just mentioned for the little ones, they just heard them, those who are ten years old and ten years old and under. Those who are 10 and under, okay? I got a gift for you here. You can earn it if you answer this question. Who is the name of the companion we just mentioned? <laughs> now you raise your hand before the answer, okay? What was the. I just mentioned this is a companion. He gave a tafsir of this ayah. What's the name of the companion? Huh? Okay, think before you raise your hand. Anyone? No cheating, man. You recording? Okay. All right. I mentioned a companion, and <laughs> and also I mentioned two scholars of tafsir. Give me one name of those scholars of tafsir. Remember, not even one. I mentioned two scholars of tafsir. And the companion who I said, this is a great companion. You guys got to pay attention. Don't just be here looking at me like, what do you think I'm here? I'm here just to sit here for you to look at me like that? No. Pay attention to what I'm saying. I just asked a question, but what happened? Hmm? I'm going to say it again, okay? That... Uh, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari and Ibn Abi Hatim, rahimahum Allah, in their tafsir, they both mentioned that this great companion, Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma. Hmm? So who was those scholars of tafsir? What's their names? Scholars of tafsir, na'am? Ah, sent, ha. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari and Ibn... Abi Hatim. Naam. And what's the name of the companion? Huh? Abdullah ibn Abbas. Tfaddal. Naam. Yeah, I was right. Zakallah. He already has one. So can listen, share this to your brother. Zakallah. Now, so Abdullah, what, what Abdullah ibn Abbas says about this ayah, hmm? that you may dislike, person dislike his wife and divorce her, and he may be a lot of good in that, in keeping her. He says, the one who dislikes his wife may be May, may get a child from her and that Allah may make the child a means of much good for him if by he be patient with her and of course the ulama they says by advising her because the husband and the wife they're supposed to advise one another upon good nobody is perfect the husband he should always remind the wife Alhamdulillah do this don't do that this is not right mashallah read this provide her with with the with the with the means of knowledge, she can come sometimes and attend the classes of knowledge, buy her books, of her language, 
if she, if she understand Arabic, give her books on her level so she can understand. If she don't know Arabic, give her books in her language so she can understand. Hey, pay attention. Last time, I, okay? So, this is very important. But not whenever the woman, she does something, I said, I ain't going to work, I know. How do you know? Follow the deen of Allah, the advices in the Quran and the Sunnah. Be patient, inshallah ta'ala. Now, and the Shaykh mentioned a hadith, the reason Sahih Muslim, hmm? who's, the, who's the companion? Because I mentioned the companion, he said Sahih Muslim, and I mentioned the companion. Who was the companion? Huh? I mentioned that earlier. The kibar too, the elders now too, not just 10 years, 10 years and up too. Now, you believe Ibn Abbas? I believe not. Not Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he, he's the one who interpret, he gave us the meaning of the ayah. Now, I did mention a hadith in Sahih Muslim, on the authority of one companion. What's the name of that companion? Hmm? I did mention it, right? I did. In Arabic. I did. When I read in Arabic, I did mention it. It's... Abu Hurairah, Ahsan. لكن أنت أجبت بصيغة السؤال. كأنك غير متأكد. لكن نعطيك إن شاء الله على لا بأس إن شاء الله ها إن شاء الله نعم طيب أو يصير أب مور إن شاء الله so just pay attention okay سلام الله خير نعم so in that hadith that is collected by the Imam Abu Dawood right on the author of Abu Huraira Abu Dawood raise your hands Bukhari Abd Rahman not Bukhari Jabir. Naam. Muslim. Ahsant. Fadda. Muslim. Nordin. What you what what you were gonna say? Ah, you said it. Okay. Zakallah. By the way, these are I'm giving out. A brother, I'm just passing them out. But a brother did the work. Jazawallah khairan. I didn't do this work, so I don't want to get no credit for anything that I didn't do. Inshallah, a brother, or one of our brothers, Allah khair, he burned these CDs. Meaning he burned, meaning he copied the CDs. Not literally burned them, right? Because if he burned them, they won't be here. All right? So, literally, so Allah khair and this brother, there is three lectures, one of them from our brother Farid Abdullah, one from Omar Kuhn, one from Abu Idris. Ayyib? Adal. Yes, you and your brother, okay? Or brothers, okay. Now, in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, a believing man should not, here they said hate, but the a believing woman. But actually what it means is divorce and separate himself and make an end to that marriage, okay? He said if, 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 if he dislikes one of her qualities, he will be pleased with another. Don't just hate a woman for one mistake and that's it, she has to go. And what about your mistake, brother? You know? No, at a certain point, the life may come to an end. They cannot live because they already follow the... Because we're going to leave, we're going to get to the chapter when what, what should be done if there is a discord and if there is chaos and if there is a lot of problems, what needs to be done? Not the, the divorce. is not the first of these solutions, no. There's a lot of things. First, the advice, being patient and this and that. Amen. Hey, قال ويحرم مطل كل واحد من الزوجين بما يلزمه للزوج الآخر وكراهته لبذله. الشيخ مشن this before in the beginning. ولا يماطله بحقه ولا يتكره لبذله. in the beginning the شيخ مشن that. 
Now he repeated again, because of its importance. It is prohibited for any of the two spouses to withhold any of the other's due rights or to have an aversion to fulfilling it. So not just because I'm not, I don't feel like doing nothing today. You have to know what is your rights and what is your obligations. And fulfill your obligation to the best of your ability. Not according to your mood or according to uh, I don't feel like today being nice. No, it's not. That's not. Muslims don't act like that. Muslims, they always, they know that they do things and they strive to do things that are pleasing to Allah. Yes, you're a human, you get mad, you get angry, if things happen in your job, you lost money, you lost a job, I don't know, you received something here that bothered you, but still, you're not going to take it out of your wife, or her take it out of her husband. No. Nah. Deal with your problems, but you still have to fulfill your obligations. Can you imagine whenever somebody is mad or receive bad news and he wants to do nothing? They're not going to go, no work. Nothing going to be, people, stores going to close down because people, they can't, no people, they go to work, right wrong. They got an issue, they got a problem, but they still go to work. Because they know that's the only way they get paid. The same way. You got issues, but you still have to fulfill your obligations because now you're doing it for Allah. And you're not doing it on... And, 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 and talk about it and, and la you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naam thumma qala wa idha tamma al-aqd lazima taslim al-zawjati allati yuta'u mithluha idha talab al-zawj taslimaha fi baytihi illa idha sharatat alayhi fi al-aqd baqa'aha fi dariha aw baladiha now another point the shaykh mentioned if the marriage contract is concluded the wife who is mature enough for the consummation of the marriage is to be given to her husband in his house if he desires that. Because now she's, she's in the house of her parents. That's usually how it is. She's in the house of her parents. Okay? And then the marriage contract is concluded. If he says, I want my wife to come to his house, then she should go is to be given to her husband in his house. Unless she has made a condition. Remember we had conditions in the chapter of condition of marriage. Unless in be, before they conclude the marriage contract, she made a condition. In the marriage contract that she will remain in her house or in her town. She will say that, for example, yes, I'm, I can marry, but my mother is sick. I want to stay with her here for a year or two, okay, until she feels better. And or she says, or the man maybe in another state, another country, another city, she's like, La, I can't move now. You want to marry? You want to conclude the marriage contract? Well, I have to stay in this town, close to my grandmother. She needs me, need my help. That's a condition that is valid in a marriage. That man should, as we learn in the chapter of the condition of the marriage, the valid conditions, he can say yes or he can say what? No. He can say, no, I need you where I am. I can't. Or if he's like, well, you know what? It's okay, alhamdulillah, me too. I got a lot of things to do, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. One year, it's okay with me. Okay? No. وللزوج أن يسافر بها سفرا لا معصية فيه ولا خطر لأنه صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه كانوا يسافرون بنسائهم وهذا معلوم بالاستقراء الذي ثبت مضمونه في مجموع أحاديث كان الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم سافرت معه عائشة كما في القصة المعروفة حيث سابقها الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم فسبقته أول مرة ثم بعد ذلك سبقها الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال هذه بتلك الشيخ يمشي he says it is permissible for and okay for the husband to to take his wife along with him in, in some of his journeys as long as that journey is, doesn't involve any معصية doesn't involve disobedience to Allah and there is no danger in it there is no danger 
in that travel, on that journey. Okay? And this is based on the fact that the Prophet ﷺ, he used to take some of his wives, his wives with him on a journey, likewise the companions of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, when they traveled. So if it's okay for a man to take his wife, as long as there is, there is no other things, uh, sometimes it doesn't mean, this doesn't mean whenever the husband traveled or wife is like, hey, wait a minute, let me get my stuff. There is, there is, sometimes she can go, some other times it's better for her to stay in the house and the like. Now, Lakin, now, now you need to listen to what the Sheikh is going to say, subhanAllah. He says, Lakin, look, it's permissible for the husband to travel with his wife, to go with him places, لكن غالب الأسفار المتعارف عليها في هذا الزمان هي الأسفار إلى البلاد الخارجية الكافرة وبلاد الإباحية والفساد فلا يجوز السفر إلى هذه البلاد لمجرد النزهة والتفرج لما في ذلك من الخطر الشديد على الدين والأخلاق ويجب على المرأة وعلى أوليائها الامتناع من سفرها مع زوجها لهذه البلاد الله أكبر the Sheikh said, yes, it's permissible for a man to travel with his wife to go places. However, he says, most of today's journeys are made to disbelieving countries. Hey, now. And they think this is something good, man, like, like, especially Muslims now. The Sheikh is from Saudi Arabia. And over there they apply the deen, mashallah. This is the way of their lives in the government, in the courthouse. Yes, this is a lot of people don't apply with that as they should, but at least this is the rules of the, of the land, the law of the land. They, are, they abide by the deen, by the Qur'an and the sunnah, jazahumullah khairan. And may Allah protect them from the evil and from the enemies, I mean. He said, but he said, but most of today's journeys are made to disbelieving countries which patronize corruption and dissoluteness, a lot of evil. Hence, it is impermissible to travel to such countries just for tourism and having fun. For such journeys greatly threaten one's religion as well as one's manners. Moreover, the woman herself and her guardians should refuse her traveling with her husband to such countries. Now you find, subhanAllah, they think like that the man is the, a good husband, is the one who go and, and take his wife from a Muslim country to Paris, to Italy, to London, to New York. Oh man, that's a good husband. No, it's not. That, that travel is not permissible in Islam. To take his wife, the Muslim woman that grew up in a Muslim environment, to take her to the land of Kufr to see nothing but Kufr and dissoluteness and, 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 and evil and la. قال وما تعرف عليه في هذا الزمان لدى كثير من المترفين من الشباب وذوي الثروة من السفر صبيحة الزواج إلى البلاد الخارجية الكافرة لإمداء شهر العسل كما يسمونه وهو في الواقع شهر السم. يسمونه شهر العسل وهو شهر السم لو موديمي Newlyweds, they travel on the second morning of the wedding to such disbelieving countries in order to spend their so-called honeymoon. Huh? Huh. Their honeymoon, honeymoon they call it. In fact, the Sheikh said it is more appropriate to call it the poison month of evil. Ain't no honey in it, nothing but some poison. Huh? Poison, yeah, poison moon. As it involves committing prohibited deeds. The Sheikh says, لأنه شهر محرم 
يؤدي إلى شرور كثيرة من خلع الحجاب والتزيي بزي الكفار ومشاهدة أفعال الكفار وتقاليدهم السخيفة وزيارة أمكنة اللهو حتى ترجع المرأة متأثرة بتلك الأخلاق الرذيلة زاهدة بأخلاق مجتمعها المسلم فإن هذا السفر حرام شديد التحريم يجب الأخذ على يد مرتكبيه ومنعهم منه ويجب على أولياء المرأة منعها من ذلك السفر وتخليصها من هذا الزوج المستهتر لأنها أمانة في أعناقهم ولو رديت هي به فإنها قاصرة النظر لنفسها وما وما جعل الولي يقيما عليها إلا لمنعها من مثل ذلك. The Sheikh says now you find some Muslims they get married in a Muslim land they Muslims and now what they want to do they the husband the next morning he's gone. They already planned, they have the tickets to go to one of these non-Muslim countries. And they think that he's doing her a big favor and her family is too. They think, man, that's the real husband. Allah, he's taking her to France, to Venice, to I don't know what. Venice? Venice. Huh? Venice. Venice? And there is Venice too. Huh. You don't know about it? Okay, now you do. <laughs> huh? Or maybe there isn't, I don't know. I'm just playing with you. <laughs> Venice, right? The one in Italy, right? All right, that's, that's the one I was on my, on my mind. Okay? And Amsterdam and Rotterdam and all of that, okay? He said, so because it involves committing prohibited deeds, such as taking off the Islamic veil, because some of those women, they're like, oh... They feel shy and they take the khimar, putting on clothes similar to those of the disbelievers, as well as witnessing their bad tradition and deeds and visiting places of immorality, mixing and this and that. As a result, the Muslim woman may return to women, they may, they may return to, to their homes affected by such evil traditions desiring to imitate them and renounce those of the Islamic community. Hence, such journeys, he says, are by all means prohibited. Since such journeys are by all means prohibited and those who make them should be uh, 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 reproved and prevented from doing so. Moreover, the woman's guardians are to prevent her from traveling with her husband to such countries and rid her of such a heedless husband as she is considered a trust that the guardian should preserve. Even if the woman herself agrees to travel with her husband to such countries, she may be unaware of her interest and what's good for her and mindless of the consequences of such travels. That is why there are persons to control and observe her interests, namely her guardian and preventing her from such acts for such acts is one of their duties I know, tell her you can't go there tell that man you can't take our daughter, our girl there so billah go to Umrah go to Medina and Mecca nah, Medina and Mecca ain't nothing to see over there Audhu billah you want to go for a travel go for a good journey Take her to Mecca, alhamdulillah. You make Umrah and from Mecca go to Medina. Hmm? Alhamdulillah. And visit, alhamdulillah, other places in there. And, and you're in a Muslim country, alhamdulillah. You pray in Mecca every salat with a hundred thousand salat. Hmm? And the woman, she can wear her hijab. Nobody, alhamdulillah, tells her anything. Even in the in the restaurants, there is place for families and place for singles. Allahu Akbar. Naam, you go to order in any, any place, any restaurant, any uh, fast food, you see it. There is lil ailat. This is only for families. Allahu Akbar. This is for those who are not with family, go to the other side. And you don't play. The adan is called. They hear it. Actually, the stores close. By the Adan or before the Adan, five minutes. No, five minutes before the Adan, they close the stores. By the Adan, that's it. They won't take your order, even if you've been there for half an hour. It happened to us many times. 
You stand in there for, especially in Hajj, you stand in there for a long line to wait for your order, and then they hear the adhan, they close. My order after salat. No, no, I've been here. Go over there, it's better for you. They tell you. These are the guys who work. He's just cleaning, he says, Salah, 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 Haji, Haji, Salah, Salah, Salah. Ma fi akal, ta'am, ma fi, ma fi. No food now. Go eat, go, go, Salat. Allahu Akbar, Bilad Tawheed. The person who's sweeping in the street is like, go, Salat. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. And if somebody stay open, they give him mukhalafa. Violation, right? No, no. Allah yahfadhum. No. وقت الأذان ها two more minutes uh, we're gonna stop here إن شاء الله تعالى uh, if you don't mind we're gonna stop here and we will continue next week إن شاء الله تعالى as there is some points that need some details in here, inshallah ta'ala. So let us review what we took so far, okay? So once again, this is, we're reading from what book? Those uh, boys that are under 10, we're reading from what book? Jabir, what book we're reading from? What's the name of the book? How to live. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. The book. Sahih Muslim. No. Not Sahih Muslim. What do you say? No. Huh? No, no. That's not the, that's not the answer for the, this question. I tell you right now. What is the name of this book we're reading from? Huh? What is the name of the book? Ahmed. The name of the book of today, Mondays. Every Monday. We've been reading it here for four years and a half. Same book, four years and a half. I can tell you the first, I'll tell you the date of the first class, inshallah, when we finish the first class in here. Bismillah now. Sadis Dul Qirda, 1432. Huh? Six of the Qirda. Actually, that's the class number three. The six of the Qirda in the year 1432. That's like, yes, four years and a half. Still, we don't know what book it is. What is the book name, Mahmoud? Huh? Oh, you were standing to answer or for something else? Ah, to call the Sorry, man. Here, this is for you, okay? Mahmoud, barakallahu fiqh, jazakallahu khair, but salat with the sad. Hayya ala salat, not salat, okay? There's a difference between sin and the sad. Tayyip? Jazakallahu khair, barakallahu fiqh. Now, some of the benefits of so far from this chapter. Did anyone tell us the book name? The Qayyum, the book name? Huh? You're asking me or you're answering? Mulakhas al fiqh, yeah, send. But you are going to get a benefit, right? You are going to say benefit. Okay, we hold on to this until you get the benefit. <laughs> For what reason? Ahsan. They do it for the sake of Allah. They fulfill these rights pleasing Allah. Not they're gonna they're gonna benefit themselves, but the main focus is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, another benefit of one. Now mir. Uh-huh. What is this restriction? There is biryani in there or what? What is the restriction? Morgi? It is no haram, no haram involved. No haram and no danger. 
Okay, no haram, no danger. Now, tfadl, asman. We didn't say that, but that was that's a good one. There you go. We did? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. We didn't, but... That's okay. Zakallah. Tfadl, Abu Darda. Tarjim in Swaningi. What then? Noari, Noari. Ani Parkiragati. Another benefit, Abdul Rahman. Ahsant. The husband has to be nice to the wife. Allahu Akbar. You know why? Oh, here. No, you did enough. Zakallah khair. The husband has to be nice to the wife. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead, man. Okay. Even if you don't say it right. Fadal. You forget? Here. That's, we have a courage to try to say something. You get CD too. I'm being, okay. Now. Tafsir ibn Abbas in the ayah. Sent. Okay. Where? But tafsir. Where the, what is found? Ibn Jarir Tabari and Ibn Abi Hatim. Now, Shaib. Ahsant. Now, the believing man should be nice, kind, don't hate the woman, divorce her for reason or no reason. Be patient, ya akhi. Alhamdulillah, you married. Now, That's from the fiqh. Allah Akbar. Hmm. Ah, okay. Sahsan. That's fiqh. We didn't mention it. But, so I'm giving you this since you already have one, but you give it to somebody. Your choice. Don't sell it. Just give it. <laughs> All right. Look around you, man. Give it to somebody. No. Yeah. The husband has to be nice to his wife. Ahsan. Yes. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> this is the last one, man. Somebody gonna get three benefits to get this one. <laughs> now, Abdul Rahman, you have your hands up. Huh? Or oh, get me one first. <laughs> He's listening. Huh? I have one. Give me one. Abdullah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Ah, it's not finished. It's not complete. Now, who else? Akasha. Ahsant. If there is upon obedience and there is no danger. Now, what else? No. If uh, a man dislikes one of the characteristics of his wife, he should be patient because there should there will be another characteristic of her that he would love. Ahsant. Barakallahu feekum, Zakumullah khair, and had also Allah wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi, sahbihi wa sallam wa sallam.